I have so many conversations with myself that I don't usually feel confident having in social setups. But I am pretty sure I am not alone. Join me on this podcast as I have these conversations unapologetically loud. My name is June Robinson and welcome to another episode of Cut the Monologue. Hey, 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 hello. Oh, I am on a roll. Like, consistency, the consistency. Ah, you have to give it up to me, Bana. You have to give it up to me. <laughs> anyway, hi, welcome to another episode of Cut the Monologue. I am super, super excited about this episode because, you know, those episodes that just make you as a person okay make you as the creator because i am the creator of this episode this is one of those episodes that just make me realize that i have so much more as an individual than what i thought i did i have so much more and again i am apologizing for the birds if you hear the birds chirping i apologize manze i still don't have uh soundproof studio (laughs) anyway thank you so much for tuning in if you are a returning listener hugs hugs from where i am recording this to where you are if you are a new listener thank you thank you so much for clicking on this podcast or for clicking on the link and just listening and i want to add you listen to my previous episodes you will for sure for sure love and enjoy them So on this episode, we are going to be talking about privilege, the privileges that we have as individuals, recognizing the privileges that we have and embracing them. So I know all of us understand or a majority of us understand what privilege is, but I, of course, just want to give the definition, you know, to remove any doubt that might be existing in the air. So privilege refers to an and advantages that we have as an individual, that you might have as an individual, or the an and access that is granted. Um, and this could be based on certain characteristics that you may have or certain social identities that you may have. And they often result in a more favorable position in society and just a rough um, example of the privilege that exists in society or the rough um, ways that privilege manifests itself in society is racial privilege. But then I feel like in the Kenyan type of setup, it might be more of tribal privilege whereby um, you gain certain access by belonging to a certain community, Okay. We also have gender privilege, which, of course, is privilege that is brought to someone based on your gender, whether you're male or whether you're female. And one thing that we should note is that gender privilege does exist, no matter how biased it is. But there are some doors that easily open up to an individual if you are a woman. And there are certain doors that open up easily when you are a man. We also have socioeconomic privilege, and this is the type of privilege that is brought about by um, the social economic status that you hold. Um, that is, if you come from a more wealthy background as compared to someone who comes from a less wealthy background and or poor background. We also have educational privilege, which is privilege brought to you by um, how learned you are or privilege that is brought to you by the educational resources and opportunities that you have been able to gain compared to someone who has not gone the same mile as you have education wise we also have ability privilege which is the privilege that people who don't have disability have and in this case we are looking at disability in both the physical and the mental and also health wise aspect of it So, for instance, racial privilege, or as I have slashed it to being, you know, tribal privilege, um, 
there are and i want to say this because it is something that exists in the country we know that there is tribal privilege that exists in the country there are times when for instance you might go to an interview and you know you are interviewing for the job and your name because we have our tribal names that we have been given by our families and the interviewer maybe also belongs to the same tribe of, as you and you may have a shortcoming that the next person being interviewed does not have but because of the fact that your tribal name aligns with the tribe that the interviewer belongs to it gives you a one up and i have seen the memes on social media especially with the current um political atmosphere that is going on in the country i have seen lots of memes that are you know going around in social media and i'm pretty sure that you know some of you as my listeners have seen it and they basically highlight just how much intense tribal privilege has become over the past year so in this scenario like in in contrast or should i say in reflection <laughs> for lack of a better word racial privilege is almost similar and this is in a situation where someone who has racial privilege does not have to worry about racial profiling for instance if you are going to travel maybe to a predominantly white um country you do not have to worry if you are a white person you do not have to worry about the racial profiling that you might that a person of color would face for instance like if you walk into an airport you know maybe you go through like five extra different checkups than the white person if you go to a restaurant someone doesn't look at you funny you know things like that um as well we have gender privilege so in some form of employment some fields of empl- employment sorry women have a higher up compared to men when it comes to you know securing the job if i may just use an example that is popping right now is we have a field like hospitality and i want to look at air hostessing in most cases when you look at the air hostess a majority of them are women and even when you look at people who go for those interviews a majority of them are women so that is a form of privilege and for men you may find that things like walking you know walking out late at night um is a privilege that they have that women don't have not to say that women don't work don't walk out at night but just the risk that it comes with is different compared to how men experience it so on social economic privilege we have individuals who have you know um who are ranked higher up in the social economic status in a community they have access to better quality healthcare better quality education and you know and just other essential services without having to financially strain themselves as compared to individuals who are ranked lower in the socio economic status they also are able to afford living in safer neighborhoods you know just access to more um social ac- activities like traveling taking their kids out as compared to someone who is ranked lower in the socio economic status of the community and education privilege where we have um people who have access to well funded schools with advanced resources experienced teachers and a variety of extra curricular activities sorry they are more privileged compared to someone who maybe went to school that doesn't have a laboratory so most of the science things they had to learn theoretically as compared to having to do them um in actuality and get to see the results um and ability privilege as i have said it's just the privilege that people who don't have any form of disability they have it um for instance if you have physical disability whereby you find that maybe you're not able to walk on your two limbs as compared to you know the average human being you may find that accommodations on how you may be able to get into a building or get to a place they have to be considered as compared to this other person if you're someone who has mental disability um how people interact with you and the words they use and even how they gauge 
your interaction is different compared to you know someone who is mentally able and as well as you know just health ability we also have another form of privilege and that is pretty privilege and pretty privilege it cuts across both men and women i know because i've used the term pretty and you know men like the hard school stuff like oh i'm handsome i'm not pretty but it's mainly termed as pretty privilege cut me the slack so <laughs> We have pretty privilege and this is the type of privilege that occurs to people who by societal beauty standards are ranked higher up as compared to others. And pretty privilege, it especially manifests itself in certain industries like modeling industry, especially, and, you know, to some extent other industries, especially when people are looking at, um, things like customer service they want someone who has that you know by societal standards pretty face because you are taken as the face the first person that people meet when they walk into a company so pretty privilege is also a privilege that exists in society and so while we have all these different privileges that exist as individuals we also have situations whereby these privilege they intertwine and you find that as an individual you have the benefit of having not only one but two privileges or you can have three privileges and in some unfair situations or in some situations you find that someone tends to end up on the lower side of the spectrum that is you find that you end up having two or three oppressions for the lack of a better word so for instance we might have multiple dimensions of identity this is a situation where as an individual you're not defined by a single aspect of your identity for example you could belong to a specific racial or um, ethnic group have certain social economic status that is you're ranked higher up on the social economic spectrum of the society and you also have pretty privilege so these aspects of your identity they interact and overlap contributing to a more nuanced experience and by nuanced in this situation what i mean is things are not black and white Instead, there are multiple layers and shades and dimensions to consider. And therefore, it often involves an appreciation for the intricacies and contexts and context surrounding an issue. Okay? Therefore, offering a more comprehensive understanding. As I have said, you find that you belong to a specific um, racial or ethnic group as in the case of our country you belong to the higher up social economic status and at the same time you have pretty privileged so all this they give you a more nuanced experience we also have um, systems of oppression and privilege that are interconnected and are mutually reinforcing for instance based on societal set standards of beauty you find that you do not have pretty privilege and at the same time you don't come from a background that is you know economically or wealthy for you know just to, to use simpler terms is wealthy so in this situation you find yourself in a double jeopardy type of um, situation and therefore your experience or you know your day-to-day -day social experience will not be similar to the person who I just described earlier. We also have um, situations where you find that you have unique experiences of privilege. For instance, you could be wealthy, you could be well-educated, but at the same time, you're physically disabled. So you find that while you face ability-based challenges, but the fact that you come from a wealthy family or you as an individual are wealthy and you are well educated, they kind of offer you some form of cushion on the fact that you have a physical disability. So with all these aspects that exist, both the individual ones and also the multiple 
dimension ones because as i've said as an individual you don't just have one aspect that identifies you you have multiple aspects that identify or that make up who you are how do you ex- how do you recognize your privilege and i'm pretty sure some people are like that's such an obvious question but for the people who are who it's not an obvious question how do you recognize your privilege self reflection first of all it's a crucial first step in identifying your own privilege okay examine your life your life experiences what are some of the experiences that i have have i had have i had um the ability to travel have i had the have i lacked that ability have i had the ability of going to the top schools in the country or the top schools in my community have i not had that experience you know social interactions and perception how do you perceive life as it is within you okay um you also look at things such as your race or your ethnic group as in our situation your gender social economic status and more you should also be able to consider the environments that you navigate and the opportunities that you've had as i have said you know what uh, when you are self reflecting you're looking at throughout my life what are some of the things that have come easily to me that were not did or could not come easy to someone else and this is why i have said privilege is something that you're able to gain without having to sweat for it it's something that it's just there on a silver platter it is available to you you know it's also helpful to question the assumption and stereotypes that you may hold about others and recognize moments where you benefited from an aunt advantages the other thing that help someone to rec- that can help you to recognize your privilege is reading diverse perspectives literature and engage in conversations with different people from different background because this can help broaden your understanding so one thing that i think um because it helped me to understand my privilege was just being able to interact with people at work and i feel like work spaces are some of the most diverse places that exists and they are they bring people from all these different backgrounds together and you know i was just interacting with um my colleagues from work and some of them finished their form 4 and they immediately got into the workforce some of them were not able to finish even form 4 some of them had to drop out and go back to school later on in a, in order for them to you know just be able to put food on the table so they had to quit school get into the workforce then the money that they get into the workforce re-enroll themselves back to school in order to finish school and by interacting with them in this aspect of education i was able to understand that I have had educational privilege because I did not have to pause my education or to not finish my education. I have been able to go through preschool to high school to campus smoothly. And so it made me recognize okay that exists. Still in my line of work, I have been able to see instances where pretty privilege has played a role. Yeah, it's hard to admit <laughs> and we will talk about this it is hard to admit it but it's something that exists i have had because i work in the beauty industry and one thing about the beauty industry is that you have to be appealing to the eyes and so i have seen how it has played a role in placing me where i am and i have seen you know how it has not played in favor of other people and it can be demotivating it can mess with someone's self esteem and we are going to talk more about that as we continue so some of the things that may make it impossible for you to recognize your privilege is being defensive and being in denial and the one thing that i think is very extremely common when it comes to this is pretty privilege people who have pretty privilege and i'm like I understand that I am pretty but I know that there are people who are prettier. 
are usually extremely defensive and they are in denial. They like being like, they like acting as if, you know, no, it doesn't exist, but it does. It does exist. So, you know, as an individual, you may feel defensive or deny the existence of this privilege, especially if it challenges their self-perception or the belief in a meritocratic society. So the strategy is you have to cultivate an open mindset and acknowledge that recognizing privilege is not an accusation, but an opportunity for personal growth. So in a situation where pretty privilege is now the factor that is being discussed, people feel like if I accept the fact that, you know, I have pretty privilege, it might feel as if you're looking down on other people, you are placing yourself higher up. But on the contrary, it doesn't. It just makes you aware that there is something you have that is likely to play in your favor that someone else doesn't have. Okay, how do you bridge that gap? Lack of awareness. Some people lack the awareness that they have privilege. For the longest time, I believed and this is my personal story i believed that everyone had to go to school i my dad was a very very passionate advocate for learning my dad my dad strongly believed in going to school learning getting your papers straight all that so in the bubble that i was raised in I believe that that is something that cut across everyone. And it also didn't help with the school that I went to because everyone, every one of my classmates pursued their education further. Not all of us went to campus. Some went to college, you know, like tertiary colleges. But the point is school didn't end at form four. So I wasn't aware that, okay, we have people who stop at Form 4. We have people who stop at Class 8. I wasn't aware of that. And it's something that exists. Lack of awareness, it exists. So how do you tackle this? You actively educate yourself on issues related to privilege inequality and systemic bias you read a lot of diverse literature but at the same time you also broaden the people who you interact with i feel like having discussions with people from different situations from different setups opens up your mind it opens up your understanding of how the world revolves fear of guilt and shame um it makes people not want to acknowledge their privilege. For instance, I know of, you know, people who have had the opportunity where um, their, parents net their parents' network is so vast and their parents use their network to push them a step or two steps or three steps ahead in life as compared to their peers. They usually feel like, you know, they don't want to admit that. Maybe because they feel ashamed that, you know, oh my God, my other peers, they just worked from scratch for this. And me, I've just been, you know, pushed or I've just been like given a step and told step there. So there is that fear of shame and guilt. And one thing that you should know is when you understand and you recognize your privilege, it's not about personal guilt, but about fostering awareness and responsibility. You need to be aware that, okay, I have something that someone else doesn't have. And by understanding that, then you will also be able to know how to bridge that gap. Limited exposure to diversity. That's um, one of the things that hinders um, personal identity. We also have the fear of losing status, where as an individual at times you feel like, okay, if I acknowledge the fact that the privilege I have played a role in my success, then that diminishes my success. But it doesn't. Your success is your success, regardless of what factors played a role in giving you that success. 
But then, recognizing and acknowledging privilege does not negate personal achievements, but encourages a more nuanced understanding of one's journey, embracing humility and using privilege to uplift others. And so I know the question right now is, okay, I have identified my privilege. I am embracing my privilege. What's the benefit of this? Why, why, should I, why do I need to do this homework and identify my privilege? First of all, you're able to increase your empathy, your level of empathy and your level of understanding. By embracing your privilege, you foster a deeper understanding of the experience of marginalized groups. Like if you, uh, if you embrace and understand the fact that I come from a wealthy background, you're able to understand why people from a poor background live the way they do, make decisions the way they make them, okay? So this heightened level of empathy, it promotes more compassionate and, and inclusive interactions, breaking down stereotypes and fostering genuine connections because now you are interacting this person from a level of understanding where they come from. Recognizing privilege also motivates individuals to become allies for marginalized community, inspiring advocacy work aimed at dismantling systemic barriers and addressing social injustices. Okay, like if we come together, you're able to ask the development fund that is meant for this community, that is meant to promote community-based developments in the community so that sustainable living can be promoted. You're able to ask, where do they go? What has happened to that particular amount? So it's able to foster ally, allies and advocacy. So embracing privilege, it also encourages continuous education about the diverseness of cultures, histories and social issues okay so it contributes to a greater social and cultural competence promoting respectful and informed engagement with people from different backgrounds so by being aware that there exist different cultures and these cultures they have these different practices you're able to interact with them from a level of being respectful of their culture because now you're able to understand that certain behaviors are culturally driven without passing judgment, without feeling like you're better than them. So social and cultural competence. Understanding your privilege also helps to promote equity in professional settings. That is a situation where you acknowledge your privilege and you are using it to advocate for equity that leads to fairer hiring practices, mentorship opportunities, and a more inclusive workplace culture. It also fosters inclusive leadership, whereby leaders who acknowledge their privilege can use their influence to create inclusive environments within organizations. Acknowledging your privilege also involves a lot of self-reflection and personal growth, which requires individuals to confront discomfort and challenge their own biases, leading to increased resilience and, ad and adaptability in the face of societal complexities. So when you acknowledge your own privilege, you're able to go through a period of personal growth where you, are, you become more self-aware of who you are as an individual. But then... Becoming aware of your privilege, it's not an easy road. It's actually a very uncomfortable, uncomfortable journey. It's completely uncomfortable. And this is because when you are in the process of recognizing your privilege, you are you evoke a range of emotions and they could include guilt and discomfort. And these responses, they're actually natural and they can serve as important catalysts for personal growth and societal change, okay? So the guilt is likely to arise because as individuals confront the disparities in opportunities and experiences that result from privilege, promoting self-reflection on one's own role in perpetuating systemic inequalities. It is very crucial 
that you challenge this guilt into positive action by using it as motivation for advocacy and friendship. The discomfort that arises from um, recognizing um, privilege, it stems from the challenge to establish belief and the realization for the need for change. And embracing this discomfort is very important and it's it's very crucial part of the learning process. Okay, so when you signal an openness to, to reevaluate perspective and contribute to dismantling inequitable systems, both emotions, that is the discomfort that you're feeling and the guilt that you're feeling, they should be approached with self-awareness. You have to be aware that you are angry, that you are guilty, that you are uncomfortable in order for you to commit those feelings towards change. Because as I have said, these feelings of guilt and these feelings of discomfort, they can act as catalysts to foster empathy, promote inclusivity, and actively work towards a more equitable and just society. So as we have looked at um, how you can make sure that the guilt that you feel and the discomfort that you feel are things that you use to catalyze your need to advocate for equity, okay? You should also educate yourself. Educate yourself about the experience that these marginalized people go through. You have to listen and learn. When you are engaging with people from different walks of life, you should be able to listen to what they say and learn from the experiences that they give you so that you can be able to channel this into positive action. You should be able to challenge the biasness and the stereotypes that exists in community, especially because a majority of them aim at targeting these um, privileges that exist. So they aim at boosting one spectrum while demoralizing the other spectrum. You should be able to support the diverse initiatives that exist advocate for inclusive policies and also you should be able to acknowledge that there exists microaggressions and microaggressions can manifest themselves in the form of jokes they can manifest themselves in the form of tone in the form of words that people use to address certain aspects so you should be able to acknowledge that these microaggressions exist but then how am i going to be able to address them so one thing that I want us to take out of this episode for today is the fact that privilege, it exists. It does exist. And privilege manifests itself in so many different forms. And by us acknowledging that privilege exists is not us making the gap wider. It is us acknowledging that it exists and finding ways that we can bridge the gap. At the end of the day, in a society setup, we are not all going to be equal. Not all of us are going to be equal. But then how can I use my benefits? How can I use the things that I have to my advantage in order to make it more beneficial to someone who doesn't have what I have? How can I bridge that gap? Okay, so that is just something that I want us to take out of today's episode and to also know that just because you have privilege does not make you less of a person. Just because you have privilege does not make your successes less valid or less valuable. They are still more valuable. They are still counted among successes. And with that, thank you so much for listening and I will see you on our next episode goodbye for now that's it for this episode of cut the monologue be sure to follow us on our social media platforms at cut the monologue that is twitter instagram threads and tiktok and also follow us on all streaming platforms and turn your notifications on to always get notified whenever we drop an episode until the next episode Goodbye for now.